Job chapter 22. Verse 22. Job 22, 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. And lay up his words in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shall be built up Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy miracles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shall have plenty of silver. Tonight we look quickly at secrets of supernatural abundance. Our objective is straightforward. It is the understanding of the pathway to divine resources. There are secrets to success. There are rules that make rulers. There are commands that make commanders. Our theme said, the abundance of the sea shall be converted to us. And the forces of the Gentiles shall come to us. What do we do? What are secrets? Number one, real passion or love for God. Real passion or love for God. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It is confirmed that our possession in life is tied to our passion for God. Now, I am not talking about any other kind of wealth or abundance. Wicked people have a way of how they get their money. Normal people, secular people who are neither here nor there, they know what they do what they know to do. But if it is God 
that is to give you the resources to step into the Abrahamic order in the kingdom. Passion for God. That was the key for Solomon. First Kings chapter 3 verse 3. Solomon loved the Lord. The beginning of Solomon's wealth began with a statement. Solomon loved the Lord. That was the summary of his life. Solomon loved the Lord. Before he married any wife, he loved the Lord. Before he began to function as king, he loved the Lord. His love for God made him to offer a thousand burnt offerings at, at once. Until God appeared to him in the night and said, what do you want? Second Chronicles chapter 26 verse 5. We saw a man by the name of Uzziah. The Bible said, and he sought God. 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 He didn't seek money. He sought God. He didn't seek connections. He sought God. He didn't look for, for contacts. He sought God. He sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord God made him to prosper to seek God is to be sought for by gold people think that passion and fire for God only belong to pastors I'm about to show you something tonight David, our third example, in Psalm 132 verse 1, David was speaking and he said, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swore unto the Lord and vowed to the mighty God of Jacob. I will not come to my tabernacle, the tabernacle of my house, nor go into, into my bed. I won't give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. That was his passion. Psalm 27 verse 4, the same passion, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm 42 verse 1 to 2, as the deer pants after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after the O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? God is hungry. He's hungry to demonstrate his benevolence. He's looking for who to empower. But they are scarce. Is God speaking to anybody here tonight? Listen to this. God! Now, many of you know about the wealth of the Solomon, but many times... The wealth of Solomon makes us not to recognize the wealth of David. David was a stupendously wealthy man. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, if you read all the way from verse 1 all the way, if you just keep going, he told you of how out of his proper good, he deposited so much and so much. Now actually, David made massive preparation for the temple of Solomon in his lifetime before Solomon came. And the secret of David was the secret of a heart that beats after God. Listen to this. Every time you read scripture and you hear of Abraham, you thought that we are talking about a full-time pastor. Or you heard of Isaac, or you heard of Jacob, or you heard of Job and his integrity and character, or you heard of David, or you heard of Joseph, or you heard of Daniel. These are the references of spirituality we have in scripture. They are the references of spirituality. Abraham was not a full-time pastor. 
Abraham was an animal. He was into animal husbandry. Isaac was not a full-time pastor. Isaac was a mechanized farmer, irrigation farmer. They Jacob was not a full-time pastor. Jacob was a, 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 a Jacob was a, a businessman that was into genetic engineering and changed the, the genetics of animals. Job was not a full-time pastor. Job that said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I behold a maid? Job that said, I have esteemed the word of your mouth more than my necessary food. He wasn't a pastor. He was a full-time businessman on fire for God. Joseph was not a pastor. Joseph who said, how can I do this great wickedness against God? He wasn't a pastor. Joseph who said, I feared God. He wasn't a pastor. He was an administrator, a public servant. Daniel was not a pastor. He was an academician. He was a politician. And then he had a prophetic mantle. Am I speaking to somebody here? All the people we are talking about were firebrand, anointed, Holy Ghost filled, powerful spiritual people. First and foremost that conquered the wealth realm. That conquered the wealth realm. They first conquered the spiritual realm and then stepped into the wealth realm. I'm sorry to say, but are those kind of people are scarce in the church. We have people maybe that were rich before they became Christians. We have people who cannot quote any straight passage of scripture or be able to speak convincingly to any group of people about God who may be Christians and they have money. The kind of billionaires and millionaires we are talking about are not like that. We are talking about people with fire, people with passion. If you look at them, you thought they were pastors until they tell you, no, I am not a pastor. I am a businessman. I am an industrialist. I am the owner of so-and-so corporation. I just happen to be a lover of God. I just happen to be somebody that is in love with God and I have the anointing to make money. First Chronicles, sorry, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are ye, that is to me like plural of all of us, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, royal priesthood, royal priesthood. The meaning of that is kingly priests. In this end time, two sets of people will be clear in church. Kingly priests and priestly kings. Priests that carry kingly mantle. He's a pastor, but he arrived to look like a king. If you looked at him, am I seeing a president of a country of who, or who is this? <laughs> One day my wife and I entered an aircraft in Ghana. And then, um, uh, the, 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 the vehicle that carried us took us straight to the foot of the aircraft. You know, it's not possible. It's not allowed. All right? That is, they drove us straight. You came down from the vehicle and then climbed the aircraft. That's, which car drives on the tarmac? And then, a man stepped in and went inside the aircraft. He, was, he kept watching us. Until we landed in Abuja here. Then he approached us. Say, good morning, sir. Please, you are the ambassador of which country, please? <laughs> it's a big man. Himself had that kind of treatment. When he came, he was dropped. Please, you are the ambassador of which country, please? Because in his mind, it is not possible to come like that. Either it was a presidential move or whatever it is that they landed you like that. Kingly priests and priestly kings. Priests that have royal aroma. A 
and royalties that have priestly aura. Businessmen, billionaires, millionaires, politicians, people in those realms, children of God, that appear you thought you saw a pastor. Pastors that appear you thought you saw a king. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Every businessman here tonight, every political person here tonight, every public servant here tonight, I like you to jack up your passion for God, your spiritual, your spirituality. Jack up yourself because God is telling you that uh, you are the Abraham of today. You are the Joseph of today. You are the Daniel of today. You are the Job of today who will conquer so much much resources and yet they are, you are not a pastor and yet they hear you speak read the book of Job that man spoke with depth he wasn't a pastor he was dealing with animals and dealing with everything he wasn't a pastor look at the insight of Daniel he didn't stand on a pulpit Is God speaking to somebody here? Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you, sirs, when we say passion for God, we are talking about a realm where you are. And in that realm, <laughs> everybody who knows you, God knows. The devil knows. Your friends know. Your enemies know that God has conquered you. I'm in love with you. Oh my very precious Lord. Your love has filled all of my heart. I have no room for no other. I'm in love with you, oh my very precious Lord. Your love has filled all of my heart. I have no room for no other. Oh Lord, I hold you in very high esteem. I lay down my all to express my love to you. Ooh. Oh Lord, I hold you in very high esteem. I lay down my all to express everybody who knows you. No. That God has conquered your will. Listen. Not everybody who carries fire is called to be a pastor. Zeal, fire, ability to pray in tongues for two hours, three hours, four hours. I can lay hands on the sick, they are recovering. It's not qualification for ministry. That is our normal realm, foundational realm for believers. This sign shall follow them, not that our pastors, that follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We have a lot of confused people in ministry today. He can speak in tongues. He prayed in, in, in tongues for many hours. He prayed somebody's headache was healed. Even somebody's cancer was healed. And he did this and that. And then he concluded that God said he should start a church or become an evangelist or something. While God is saying, I am calling you to conquer billions with this same anointing. While you are on the business field, cast out devils. While you are in negotiations, chase out demons. Use that anointing in the marketplace and be a king, a priestly king. Take your
religious. That's why. He said, yeah, the, but the man is anointed, but nothing is working and nothing is growing. Let him rethink and let him go back to God and find out. I have fire. I carry fire. But am I called to pastor? Joseph's fire didn't lead him to ministry. Job's spirituality didn't lead him to start a church. <laughs> it's, not, it's not speaking to somebody at all. Abraham said, he talked to God face to face, yet he didn't start a ministry. A man pastored for 21 years. According to what I heard from a senior man of God in Southern Africa, in South Africa specifically. Things didn't seem to be working and he went to God, Lord, what are you saying? And God said, I didn't ask you to pastor after 21 years. Lord, what should I do? Hand over the church to that person and point at somebody in the church who has the calling of, of ministry. And what do I do? Become a faithfully committed to the church. What? His calling was in the business frame. His calling was in the marketplace. His calling was in the field. And then he decided that. It, that is why the world is not having the impact. We are all gathered on the pulpit. There are pulpit level anointings that should be dealing with some offices in the civil service and kill bribery and corruption and kill some things there. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? There are some anointings that God gave you to deal with the campus cultism. Maybe he wants you to be a lecturer, a vice chancellor with the anointing that is like an apostolic anointing and clean up that campus and clean up the campuses. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? I didn't think I would be a, a full-time pastor. I didn't think so. As a young medical student and then slightly medical doctor, I was seeing cancer healed and everything. Healed. But at what it wasn't for me, I was going to minister part-time and do my medical work full blast. Conquer enough resources and sponsor the things until God said what I'm telling you about requires to go more. That's the truth. Ask God, he will tell you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I think my sister here must have known. The first vision that I ever produced was the vision of a medical, a medical and healing center. I'm sure you're aware of that, of that too. That was what was, what's your vision? Going to, there's going to be a big, a big um, a hospital that is like a teaching hospital where we'll officiate and then there will be uh, patients will handle patients if I'm invited to preach anywhere I will go but that will be my base and then um, the security men can cast out devils from the gate and if the patient doesn't need to enter the hospital he can turn back from the <laughs> and the nurses can deal with some cases and the, and the, and, and the pharmacists can handle some and then we just medical and healing center just you can, it, it, it is we interceded for it. It's either you receive it by the unction or by the injection. <laughs> hey! There were some here who interceded for it. Am I communicating? Until God said, look, I, I understand what you're talking about. But go full blast. There is a young man here today. He's a consultant physician from the UK. We met just now. We met in the, at the. We met during the foreign delegates. Foreign delegates uh, meeting. You see here. Anybody knows him? He's, he's a consultant physician in London. All right. Well, he's gone back already. He only attended the morning session. He came to me and said, I was one of those 
that was following you in the university I was a member of the Medical Students Fellowship. When? And he described to me, he said, when I was doing housemanship, after I graduated, he was a student on campus. Received all that impartation, went to England, did postgraduate training, he's now a member of the Royal College of Physicians, and he's working right there in the, in, in the UK as a medical doctor with the same fire he received as a student. He came here today. He has been impacted and then fired and is returning back there to release that fire right there. That is what we are talking about. I met a neurosurgeon who is now a, a neurosurgeon in Ibadan. He said, we were students when you were, when you were a student and was our leader on campus there. And here, how he was affected and impacted and said the fire is still on. Ministering there with that anointing can blast off the brain tumor or cut it off by surgery. Anyone that works. <laughs> hey! Hey! Somebody shout power. So I don't know whether you are a pastor or a politician or a businessman. We all need fire equally. We all need unction equally. We all need the passion for God equally. And if you are here and you are in need of that, lift your hands and shout power. Shout the loudest amen. Shout the loudest amen. Shout the loud most amen. Shout amen at the top of your voice. Take your seat. We have morning due tomorrow. And let us go. If this point was the only point I dealt with today. And you went to me and said, Father, shift me. There are many God can't trust them. Because if I make him wealthy, he may go to hell. If I increase his resources, he might just backslide. He might just stop reading the Bible. Stop, start fixing businesses on Sunday morning and not be in church. But when you come to a sufficient level of fire, that even in the business realm, let me say it like this. When you come to a sufficient level of passion and fire, that even if they drop you in hell, you will convert people there. Ay, 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 ay. They dropped you in hell. You are the one to affect hell. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Even if they, there is no level of money you will see that you will agree to be corrupt. That is, you are incurably spiritual, incurably upright, incurable like an incurable addiction. Incurably upright, incurably passionate, incurably fireful. Then God said, Give him a billion dollars. God said, Sit him on the table with all the billionaires on earth. Let them introduce occultism to him. They are talking to the wrong person. Let them tell him to do a kick back and kick front and kick side, kick left. They are talking to the wrong person. Am I speaking to somebody here? That is the level God wants you to get to. That you have come to a point of fire and passion and integrity, character, honesty, sincerity in your dealings. And you are so, you are so Christian that they will, they will see you and call you a Christian without knowing who you are. You are set for the command of wealth. If you see God, ask him. If you drop one trillion now, you cannot shift this person you are seeing. No, no amount of money. Come on, I have a car parked somewhere there. Come and take it. So you don't know who you are talking to. Come and take a car. Why? I should carry myself and come and take a car. No fear oil. Listen to this. That is what God is looking for. Be 
billionaires that will do night vigil on their own in the house. They have a major transaction. He is up in, the, in, in, in his house. From night till morning. He slept by 4 a.m. Got up after three hours or four hours. Hit the road. Flames of fire on his eyes. He steps into the business negotiation place. And all the occultic millionaires look at him and fade away. They just fade off. They just fade off. They just fade off. By the superiority of power. Oh yeah, because, because many of them who don't know God, they know something else. They know somebody else. They are not servicing the altar of God. They are servicing another altar. It might be a psychedelic occultism, but it is still occult. They may not visit the native doctor in your village, but they are visiting somewhere. All manner of fast track travelings and transcendental meditations and tarot cards and huge boards and occultic mirrors and all manner of Eastern, Eastern esoteric sciences and all manner of all manner of manners. Oriental religions. Teaching them do this and do that. And then you are go, go, going normal. The highest you did was that you came to church. With the Bible you didn't open until that Sunday. You're a businessman. You didn't open the Bible until that Sunday. And after service, you won't open it again till next Sunday. You are just moving about. Suited. With your pen in your pocket. Very, very normal. Very, very normal. As for spiritual temperature below zero. Below zero, below zero degrees, freezing, freezing until you, until you are just moving about like an, a frozen ice fish. Just moving. No, sir. That is what, not what God wants from you. You have to wake up with eyes that are red. A spirit that is like a volcano. In motion perpetually. Like a perpetual spiritual motion machine. A perpetual spiritual motion machine. A spiritual th thermodynamic. Just in motion. Electromagnetodynamic motor. Spiritual electromagnetodynamic motor. You are just, you are just moving. You are just in motion. Am I communicating? If this, because it's a sick first. If this is the only thing you had today, Lord, I want you to spiritualize me first before you prosper me. I want you to turn me into a firebrand first. I want you to tell me I want the priestly mantle first before I ask for the kingly robe. When you are like that, nobody need to fear for you. They can go to sleep. Like I said, they drop you in hell. You will convert people there. If some demons are not careful, they will listen. Because of the level of who you are. There are people that their threshold is so low. If they say they are not taking bribe, it only depends on the amount. <laughs> it just depends on the amount. You say take one thousand one million dollars. Say no, I'm a Christian. Ten million dollars. No. Hundred million dollars. Okay. Why now? This thing will change your life forever. Okay, let me collect it and, 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 and ask for forgiveness later. In fact, I can even use the money to build church. I will pay tight. It only depends on the threshold of the temptation. Oh, 
Nigeria. So, <laughs> BN, it just, it just uh, it depends on the level. They dropped 100 trillion is in front of you. Take it and do this and deny your faith. Say, both you and the money. Fire! Fire! <laughs> Peter said to Simon, your money perish with you. Die with the money. God needs to take us to that. So when you reach that point, there is nothing he cannot trust you with. There is no dimension of resources. No dimension of connection, contact. Nobody you need to know. He can't make you know on the spot. For many, he's too afraid for us. That in addition to destroying ourselves, we will spoil his name. Take your seat. If you didn't hear anything tonight, don't forget, God is looking for kings that are priests and looking for priests that are like kings. He's looking for people that are billionaires and you thought they were pastors. He's looking for pastors and you thought they are leaders of a whole territory or superintending billions. That is how it is. And somebody is getting there. Say it loud, amen. Number two is solid kingdom vision. The two are connected. Passion for God and vision for the kingdom, they are connected. Vision is foundational for provision. Provision travels in the direction of vision. It travels in the direction of vision. And for the sake of time, I'm going to be very, very fast. That, uh, Joseph was a man who saw where he was going before he got there. Genesis 37, verse 7 and 9. He saw where he was going. Sorry, 39. All right, yes, that's right. 37, 7. Can I actually read it all the way to verse 9? Where he saw his future before he got there. In Genesis 13 and in verse 15. God speaking to Abraham, he said, All the land which thou seest to thee will I give it unto thy seed forever. All the land which thou seest. Question is, what do you see? What are you looking for? Then, if what you are looking for financially enters your hands, what will you do with it? Is it clear? And what you want to do with it, don't what is the kingdom content of it? What is the kingdom quotient? What, what proportion of what you are looking for will impact the kingdom? What proportion of it? David said to God in Psalm 122 verse 9, he said, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. One translation said, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, if you put money in my hands, I know exactly what to do with it. That's the good news translation. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I pray for prosperity. I want pros your prosperity. Father, give me money and, and I want to build you a house. Now, he said that in Psalm 132, verse 1 to 5. I will not sleep until I build God a house. And he was saying, give me the money I will use to build your house. Proverbs 23 and in verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 21, verse 5. The thought of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. They are taught people that will be rich, what goes through their mind is different from what goes through the mind of other people. They are, they are occupied with quality, solid vision. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That is God does not only answer our asking, he answers our thinking. He answers our thinking. 
that is your mind is filled. Lord, I want to build a church a month, a church a month, a church a month. For a start, and I'm looking for this, and I'm trusting you for your prosperity. I want to build a house for the orphans. I want to build a house for the widows. I want to do this, I want to do that. And it fills your mind. You are not, what is in your, you see, people that are, you see, there is a difference between surviving and, and, and being a blessing. There are people who are, oh, they are in the survivor mode of life. You know, as they think, right? I'm trusting God for, if you see their prayer request, I'm trusting God for a house. Trusting God for a car. Trusting God for, um, I think I need to change my clothes now. Um, ten suits. And I'm trusting God for, um, what else? A house, a car. Okay, let me start. Maybe a house to rent first. Then I'll, I'll buy another house. And then um, I buy a house. Then, okay. Then a wife. What else? I think that is all. Thank you, Lord. Now, there are people who say, you mean that I can ask for any other thing don't have a house, even if I don't have a car, yes. While you are still trekking, Lord, I am not looking for a car. Give me a million dollars. Let me use all of it to fuel crusade this year. And God said, what? A million dollars to fuel crusade? I will give you 1.5 million dollars. Use one million for the crusade. Use 0.5 million to do the things to get yourself a house and a castle on. You need an elastic mentality, not a plastic mentality. To have an explosive destiny, you need to stretch your mind beyond your immediate needs and immediate limitations. You don't want to think just in the realm of where you are. What would you like to do with your life? If you have all the money, all the contacts, all the resources, that is what to think about. You think as if it's all there. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say amen at the top of your voice. A louder amen. amen I cannot tell how much we had before this construction started I have an idea of how much we had before we bought the land it was bought <coughs> I'll, not, I'll not tell you how much it, well some of you have heard of, of it already we had mega deposit pin up Mega. Then it was time to pay for property on which the house will come. Then we have to start from the scratch. We were talking as if there was 20 billion in the account. And we were moving without respect for the account balance. respect for the account balance no consultation of the account balance we have a need for 100 million within this one week go ahead we have a need for 200 million go ahead <laughs> one chief executive officer of one of the topmost engineering companies, construction companies in the country, came here in the heat of the construction. He looked at everything he said, I am sure that you will not spend nothing less than 150 million to 200 million per week. He said at the rate of this construction and with the volume of things he saw, he said, I'm sure of that. 
I didn't have an exact figure at that time. I said, well, it's massive. What is going on? You see, I am too sure of that. You see, I think I have to come to this church after it is finished. It, is, it, has, it, it has been built. See, I, see, I want to be raptured from here. <laughs> it will never enter your hands if it can't cross your mind. No. I've told you the story before of the Kenneth Hagin man who came up in their camp meeting one day and said to everybody, and I heard this from God's servant, Pastor Ia Deboy. He was in that conference in the year of 1978. I think 79, 78. Where a man came, about 17,000 people were gathered at the annual camp meeting. And he said, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the man came out and said, Everybody, Give your best tonight. Because everything you all give, myself and my wife will double it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> People got angry. What kind of proud man is this? Who do you think you are? So they, the offering increased because of the anger. They gave angrily to see how he could double it. If they plan to give one dollar, they give ten or something like that. They gave angrily. Everybody waited for the money to be counted. Seventy-eight. Three point five million dollars cash of nineteen seventy-eight. That may be like three point five billion now at inflation rate. They announced it. When they announced it, people thought the man would run or change his mind or dodge. He stood and he said, all of you, every one of you, this is all you can give. The whole of you gave $3.5 million, all of you. Say, I'm disappointed. Well, I'm writing a check for $7 million. Double. <laughs> wow. So, that the Jew said after the service he wanted to know his secret he followed him say excuse me sir what you did is very strange how is that possible he said he started business three years before only three years with five hundred dollars five zero zero that was the Everything he had, if you carry him, hit him on the ground. You can't shake more than $500 out of his body. He started business, $500. And told God, everything you will give me as profit from now, I would give you 90%. See, other people give you 10% and keep 90. You are bigger than me. You take 90, I keep 10. Try me and see. God tried him. Bam! He responded positive. Bam! Bam, 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 bam! Under three years, he had enough money in his account out of the 10% to sign $7.5 million. Why did that happen? In his mind, he was not looking for money for himself. God, if you need money, pass it through me. And because the pipe that carries the water cannot be dry. If you need money, Lord, pass it through me. What is your vision? To be like all the rich men in your village who are moving about oppressing people. Snatching people's land. Or only he has, um, in Nigeria or some of African countries, only he has light in his, in his compound. 
Everybody else is dark. They celebrate him as a cricket king. Is that what, what you are looking for? To finally show people you have arrived. No, sir. Or to change cars as frequently as possible. No, sir. If it is heaven, you are trusting to empower you. Key number two is kingdom vision. Kingdom vision. Number three. Lord, help me to finish this thing tonight so that we can finish this, the syllabus for this program. Number three is spiritual sensitivity. Spiritual sensitivity is key to kingdom prosperity. Spiritual sensitivity means divine direction is key to divine provision, divine direction. God told Isaac, don't go not down to Egypt. Remain in this place. I will bless you here. Genesis 26 verse 2. Remain in the land of, I will show you this particular land. I will, your blessing is here. Je God told Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 1 all the way to verse 3 or 2 and 3 first. God told him and the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, get the hands, turn you eastward. Hide yourself by the brook cherry that is before Jordan. He said, and it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Divine directions. Spiritual sensitivity. Hear me. Divine provision is location specific. Is that big English? Divine supply is location specific. What God has kept for you can, is not found everywhere. And when I say location, I'm talking about country. I'm talking about city. I am talking about locality. I am also talking about domain, like a trade, like a profession, like a career. There is a realm, there is somewhere where what is yours is waiting. Our challenge in this world is that they say there is money in gold. Everybody rushes there. Oh, there is money in yes, Everybody rushes there. Oh, there is money. Oh, there is a new level of investment now. If you give them one naira, they give you two naira every month. <laughs> eh? Give them one naira, they give you two naira every month. And everybody rush. And everybody, scat everybody, everybody begins to cry. They begin to look for their money. See, they are not answering, they are not responding to call again. Oh. For, for almost one week now, they haven't returned my call again. Oh. No response to text anymore. <laughs> and they are so plenty these days. Hello? God can tell you, my son, my daughter, go and sell crayfish. Buy it from so and so place. Take it to so and so place. And you become a billionaire. Yeah. Not because you are doing property business in Abuja. Yeah. Everybody is looking for agency fee. Yeah. And they are not agents. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, beloved brothers and sisters. The same way that a pastor must find his location and bearing from God, a Christian businessman must find his bearing. Where I am meant to be is where I am now. In dynamis ministry. 
If I should move myself to London, as I move myself there, I am on my own. I move myself to America, no miracle. Go to Russia, I may rush back. Or you go to Germany and jam need. Jam need, jam need. Am I communicating? Let me say let me say it again. The same way that a pastor will ask God, where are you sending me to? What is my ministry location? Which assignment? What even what am I to preach? The voice said to me, cry. Isaiah said, I should cry what? You give me a mission, what is the message? I need to know my mission. I need to know the message. I need to know the mantle. I need to know my mentor. I need to know my maker. Take your seat. One man, one businessman, can I take in, I read in his book, he said, a businessman in his ministry has never lost one once in business. He has never done a wrong investment once. He asked the man, he said, what are you talking about? What do you mean by that? Is there anybody who has it like that? What, is, what do you do? The man said he has a secret through an upper room. He calls it upper room in his house. Every time there is a business decision to make, he will go to that room. Lord, should I go? He said, if I hear, yes, I go. If I, if I don't hear anything, I wait. If I hear, no, I don't do anything. If I don't hear anything, I don't do anything. Am I communicating at all? Tonight, God will show you direction. And how many of you know that opportunities are as abundant as human beings? The people have an easy way to eye another person's breakthrough, another person's realm. His own line of business appears flourishing. Ask God to show you your line. When you see your line, people will like to do what you are doing. Am I speaking to somebody here? Say amen. amen. Lift your right hand and say, Father. Louder, say, Father. I receive spiritual sensitivity. I receive direction. 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 Number four. Number four. Let's go quickly to number four. In case you don't, you say, how do I hear God? Well, finding God's will, we have messages here and there on them. Lord, whichever way you can talk to me, show me. Whether it is in dreams, whatever, just show me. Number four is quality covenant practice. I have one more after this and then we are true. Quality covenant practice. The Bible said, God said, Deuteronomy 8, 18. You shall remember the Lord your God. He is, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto your fathers. What is that covenant? Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. What is that covenant? Genesis 12, verse 3. He swore to our fathers. Our, no, verse 2. He swore to our fathers. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shall be a blessing. As you are a blessing, I will be blessing you. As you are a blessing, I will be blessing you. That is the covenant. As you, are, as you are giving, you will be receiving. As there is the seed time, there is the harvest time. As far as night and day exchanges position, seed time and harvest must exchange position. What is the covenant? Acts chapter 20 verse 35. B. I have showed you all things. How that soul laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
So, in giving is blessing. Give and be blessed. In giving is the blessing. In receiving, well, is a level of blessing, but in the giving is the blessing. Quality covenant practice. And if this is the, all I will say for the rest of tonight, it involves two things. First, a deep understanding of the covenant and its workings. For a quality covenant practice requires a deep understanding. What it means to be a tighter. What it means to be a sacrificer or a sacrificial giver. What it means to honor your God ordained prophet or apostle over your own life. What it means to touch the life of the poor. What it means to invest in kingdom projects. What it means to, 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 to impact the evangelistic field in soul winning. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not what you do that determines what result you get, but the understanding with which you do it. Hello? Ay, 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 ay. There are many tight givers who have never seen a dividend of open heaven. There are many, how many of you can confirm that? You are pastors, you know that there are members of the church who may have come to you and say, I pay my tithe, I do this and that. I have not seen any result. There are many. And I will share a passage with you that will clear your understanding. Don't just do things because church said do it. Or pastor said do it. Or because somebody said I did it and I... It's all right to follow such examples. But you do them with the understanding that produces results. Am I communicating? Anybody remember the parable of the sower? Anybody remembers? Some seed fell where? On the wayside. Another seed fell where? On the stony, sto, stony ground, the rock. Another one fell where? On the thorn. First, on the wayside, the beds of the air picked it. Next, on the stony ground, it has no depth of root. Third, on the thorns, and it was choked. Which is the final one? On good ground. This will shock you. Even on the good ground, the outcome wasn't the same. Look at it, Matthew 13, 8. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some Sixty-fold, some thirty-fold. What? Why is this that Pastor A did exactly what Pastor B did? And Pastor A got a hundredfold. Pastor B got 60 fold pastor C only got 30 fold is God Pasha somebody say God is not Pasha how many of you have wondered like that before. How many of you have, have wondered like that before? There is something I am looking for. I'll show that to you shortly. 
Lift up your right hand. Say, Father. Say it louder. Say, Father. Say it louder. Say, Father. I must bring forth maximum yield. I must bring forth maximum yield. In the name of Jesus, my harvest shall not be arrested. My harvest shall not be arrested. I shall bring forth maximally. Say it again. I shall bring forth maximally. My harvest shall not be arrested. I, I, I just, I cannot find that scripture right now. He said that the others in a good and understanding heart. I'm just trying to look for that passage. If I don't get it now, I'll get it tomorrow. And once I get it tomorrow, I'll let you know. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. Well, I'll get the scripture and get, and get it for you. Now, every one of them was good ground. But he said, others received with an understanding heart. In the course of the prayer, I'll get it for you. All right. All right, that's it. He said, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Now listen to this. Please place that in on the scripture. There, were, there are three grounds here according to result. The one that brought hundredfold, the one that brought sixtyfold, the one that brought thirty. One thing is constant for all of them. They are good ground. They are good people. He's a sincere Christian. He's a child of God. He loves God. That is common. The only variable is understanding. The only thing that differentiated the grounds was to what? With what understanding they did what they did. So me and you can pay tight and not see the same result. Because of the understanding. Somebody is doing it religiously. Another one is doing it revelationally. And of course, the depth of your understanding affects the strength of your faith. Your faith is directly proportional to your understanding. Your conviction, which is the child of faith, is what determines the your, the, the faith element in your action. Someone say amen. So, the first thing is practice the covenant, quality covenant practice, and the second is consistency. A consistency. A consistent quality practice. Don't just be a tighter. Understand what you are doing. Don't just be a giver. Understand it in depth. Be convinced that you are not helping a church. Be convinced that this thing you are doing is for your life. And then, have a consistent quality practice. Consistent. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Be not weary in well doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. 
Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say a louder amen. What have we said? Secret number one, passion for God. Number two, solid kingdom vision. Number three, spiritual sensitivity. Number four, quality covenant practice. Number five, final divine wisdom. Divine wisdom. Divine wisdom is a magnet of supernatural wealth. First Kings chapter 10 verse 23 speaking about Solomon the Bible said so King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Have you read Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 4 and 5 before? It will show you what wisdom can do. He said with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten the riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic you have increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of your riches that is another matter wisdom is the magnet of wealth. Divine supplies travels in the direction of divine wisdom. How many wise people do you know in scripture? Anybody? Can you call any name? Solomon, was he poor? Who else did the Bible identify wisdom with? Joseph, was he poor? He controlled the wealth of a whole country. Who else? Job. Was he poor? Who else? Daniel. Was he poor? They traveled together. Jacob. Let me round off. A man met me sometime last year. And he said, I make money, but I don't see the money. Millions. Help me. Then he said, people come to me and say, can you borrow me 10 million? Can you borrow me 5 million? Can you borrow me 25 million? And I will borrow them. And they will not return it. And I am flat. And then the wife said, it looks like the people, even some even use charm in their mouth. And he cannot reject. He cannot say no. I looked at him. I said, are you bank? As an individual, are you a bank? <laughs> People borrow money to, from banks or deposit money in banks. If people come to you and they have a need, assist them with whatever you can give them that you may not expect back. And deploy your resources to multiply the wealth God gives you. From today, that mentality dies. And from today, go. He saw me yesterday. They were showing me diverse pictures of investments. Under five, six months. They have built this one. They have built this one. They have built. I say, are you borrowing people? I say, for where? It has stopped. As it stopped, the money multiplied. Millions, sir. Millions. See our, our other branch of business. See our other branch of business. See our other. See our building. Beautiful construction. High ranking in their organization where they are. Uh, one of the businesses they are doing. Top. Tops. Nothing profits like wisdom. Take your seat. I spoke to another young man. I said there should be a difference between your personal finances and the business finance. Except you are buying a company car, you can't take money just like that from business money for luxury, for pleasure. I said place yourself on salary. <laughs> Any 
anybody looking for your help, help him from what comes to you. Except if you have another fund from the organization for charity. He said, including me myself. I said, you yourselves. Yourselves. The overall business money is your money. But develop your business first. Be a salaried earner like others. Fix it. And let the business run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time you buy a car of 10 million as a businessman, you should have nothing less than 100 million somewhere. Otherwise, that car was a waste. You are not doing for 10 million naira car yet until there's 10 times that amount somewhere. Minimum. Carry 10 million naira car, packed it in front of a house you are renting for 6 million. The house rent will be increased. The landlord will increase the house rent. I went to dedicate somebody's estate somewhere. Beautiful, big, high rise. Explosive. I said, where are you living? He said, I am living in a two-bedroom flat that I am renting for 120000 Say said, that is better for me for now. Millions! The estate he built, I don't think that anybody will pay less than half a million or one million per year. He found where he's paying only 120000 The balance of the money is deployed to multiply. That is wisdom. Plural wisdom. The capacity to delay your gratification is your capacity to multiply your satisfaction. Your capacity to delay your gratification is your capacity to multiply your satisfaction. There are people whose billions should have increased by now. But God said, I can't send him the money now. He's too wasteful. No wisdom. He's just, just looking for what to spend it. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I can't talk about wisdom all day. It involves the structure of the organization. It in involves the separation of personal resources from company resources. It involves investment mentality that you are not that you are you are you are not expenditure driven and investment scarce, but you are investment an expenditure low. You put money in what brings money, not in what takes money. And to, be underst and to understand that original money is for investment. Child money can be spent out of. That is, you got one million. It entered your hand. That one million, its purpose is not to be wasted. It's to look for what that one million can, can, can become. If, for example, you are able to put that one million in something, and it, that is after you have done your covenant practices, and that one million has become two million. You got one million profit. Out of that one million profit, you may then decide to do something out of it a little, and then remultiply, remultiply, remultiply. Until you come to the point where one million means nothing to you. Where one million can become like daily pocket money. Stand up on your feet. You know somebody just got a contract of five, got a gain of five million and he bought a car of 4.5 million. With such wisdom, you don't need to apply for foolishness. Please stand up on your feet anyway. <laughs> and then, and then it's the, the balance of the 500, he struggled to do one thing. And then under one month, he's looking for money. 
to service to fuel the 4.5 million Naira car. What kind of vulture, kind of uh, uh, guy is this? You will never be like that. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. Stand up on your feet. A young man met me in our church. I remember when he came and gave a giving of in eight zeros. Seven zeros towards this construction. They dropped ten checks. Each of them in drafts. Six, six zeros. And he came back later. I said, the first time I saw him in the crowd, he sat on the front, second row, front row. It was very dry. Very, very dry. I said, you are too dry. What is wrong with you? I used to know you on fire. What is wrong with you? Everything is, you say, everything is wrong. I prayed for him. Next time I saw him, as his spiritual life got fixed and other things got fixed, that was when he came with those 10 drafts for this project. The next time he came, he said, sir, God has so shifted me that I am number one in my line in Nigeria. He said, there are people who work for me who, who get up to one million a month for him. He said the truth is what I brought last time, if I bring it now and call it sacrifice, is a lie. <laughs> he said, but I am on low profile. I don't want people to know. I said, congratulations. Remain under radar. Remain under radar. Continue as a, 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 submar, a submersible submarine. Just remain on that radar. There are people, it's only one million they got. The whole world. Mobile phone of 500,000. Hello? Hello? Yes. I'm using Nokia Golden. Apple. Hello? Just, all he had was just two million. His, his working step has changed. iPhone 20. Don't do like that. Don't do like that. Your journey is still very far. God wants to take you very high. Don't be over bloated when you are just starting. Calm down. Calm down. Lift your hands and thank the Lord tonight. Somebody, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, lift your voice in thanks to God. Lift your voice in thanks to God. Lift your voice in appreciation. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the honor. Thank you, Master. We are going to pray the five prayers very sharp. Lift your hands and say after me, number one, say Father. Okay, let me start from the back. Let's start from the back. Say Father, I come before you today. I thank you for your word to me. I apply for the baptism of divine wisdom. I apply for the baptism of divine wisdom. I apply, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and speak to God. Apply for the baptism. Of divine wisdom, I apply for the baptism.
prophecy of divine wisdom I apply for the baptism of divine wisdom I apply baptism of divine wisdom I apply for a baptism of divine wisdom I apply for the baptism of divine wisdom I apply in Jesus name lift your hands and say father help me with a deeper understanding of the covenant of the practice of the covenant a deeper understanding father give me the grace for consistency in covenant practice I receive that grace Lord in the name of Jesus open your mouth and speak to God